Okay, so we celebrate Christmas a little bit early this year. Okay, so Merry Christmas to all. Merry Christmas. Okay, so we know that Christmas is all about Jesus, the birth of Jesus coming down here on earth okay, to save us. So let's all stand to remember the miracle of His birth okay, that brings joy and peace to all of us here in this world. Okay, let's sing this familiar song. <clears throat> Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven. Again, joy to the world. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature 
welcome you into our midst, Lord, for you are the God of heaven and earth. We've come to praise you. Who is the God who said to the darkness, let there be light, and there was light? Who is the God who made the heaven, the sun and moon, the stars and sky? He is the one who like no other, omnipotent and oh so wise, invisible yet ever present, he is the holy God most high. This God is our God forevermore and evermore. He'll be our guiding light now until the end of time. God is our God forevermore and evermore. He'll be our guiding light now until the end of time. Who is the God who said to the darkness, let there be light and there was light? Who is the God? heaven, the sun and moon, the stars and sky. He is the one who's like no other, omnipotent and oh so wise. Invisible yet ever present, he is the holy God most high. This God is our God forever. Our guiding light now until the end of time. This God is our God forevermore and evermore. He'll be our guiding light now until the end of time. This is the God came down from heaven, said let the children come to me. He healed the sick and walked on water, he conquered death to set us free. He is the one who's always loved us, even when we've walked away. It is his love that will ever hold us, until the day we God is our God forevermore and evermore. He'll be our guiding light now until the end of time. This God is our God forevermore and evermore. He'll be our guiding light now until the end of time. Let the children come to me. He healed the sick and walked the water. He conquered death to set us free. He is the one who's always loved us, even when we've walked away. It is his love that will ever hold us until the day we see his face. This God is our God. Forevermore and evermore, He'll be our guiding light now until the end of time. This God is our God. Forevermore and evermore, He'll be our guiding light now until the end. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah, hallelujah, one more time, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
Lord, we give you praise, Lord. For you are our God forever and ever, Lord. You bring hope to us, Lord, in these dark times when we need joy and peace in our lives right now, Lord. So we come and ponder upon Christmas. That whenever this season comes, <clears throat> we'd like to think, Lord, upon the true meaning of why you came down know the true value and significance of Christmas. When upon Christmas words can't express our Father in heaven has sent us his best to be born in a manger the King in the hay and creation will worship His name. For the joy of the world He was born, bringing peace to us all through the gift of the Son. Now the darkest of The Savior of heaven has come. When I think upon Christmas, words can't express how our Father in heaven has sent us his best to be born in a manger, the King in the hay. Will worship his name for the joy of the world he was born, bringing peace to us all through the gift of the sun. Now the darkest of ages are gone for the Savior. King of all days, I can't help but respond with an offering of praise. Like the wise man and shepherd, I'll follow your light. Like the angels, I'll lift your name high. For the joy. the sun, now the darkest ages are gone, for the Savior of heaven has come. Now I look in reverence to that holy night, for the God of the on his mind, let us sing of his glory, rejoice in his name, O Emmanuel with us always. For the joy of the world he was born, bringing peace to us all. Of the sun, now the darkest of ages are gone. For the Savior of heaven has come. I don't know what kind of year this has been for you. Maybe some had a very good year, maybe some had a very bad year. But whatever has happened to us, let us remember that Jesus has promised to all those who would call on his name that he would be with him 
that he would respond and answer his call so right now if you need peace in your life if you need joy in your life just approach the baby in the manger our lord jesus christ who is our king our lord and our savior and ask for this peace let it come to you let us not resist the work that he is doing right now in our lives Amen. 
glorified in our midst, Lord. Not only today, Lord, but this season, uh, during Christmas, Lord, you may be visible, Lord, through us, that people may see your glory, your love, Lord, your joy and peace through us. Lord, and may all of us here in this place right now experience this joy and this peace that only you can give. And although the world around us, Lord, is filled with struggle, is filled with war, is filled with disease, Lord, is filled with natural calamities, Lord, we can be sure that we are safe in your arms, Lord. May this be the gift that we can give to you this Christmas, Lord, that we surrender ourselves to you, that you may become Lord of our lives for the rest of our days, Lord. Be with us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, please be seated. <clears throat>
Okay, good morning, brothers and sisters. Okay, first of all, I want to welcome everyone to our uh, Christmas celebration. Okay, so as we celebrate Christmas, okay, we just want to acknowledge uh, some of the things that uh, we have been seeing. One is we want to thank mga kanina who have given us a very good skit. Okay, I don't know if you know what it is. Okay, so... Uh, but we know that uh, they have uh, taken time to practice and then to prepare for itong skit na to. So we want just to acknowledge their good work, okay? And at the same time, okay, we take this time na lang para at least matapos na lahat. We also want to acknowledge, you know, after our service, okay? We are celebrating, isn't it? So in every celebration, may ano? Dapat may ano? May pagkain, di ba? <laughs> so every celebration, dapat may pagkain. Pag walang pagkain, Hindi celebration ng tawag doon. So, we are celebrating Christmas and after this service, we would have a, uh, a lunch together. Okay? And so, yung lunch natin, we have a lot of people who had labored, who had cooked uh, good food, uh, uh, mga masasarap na pagkain for us to be able to enjoy okay, after yung service natin. Okay? So, yesterday, I dropped by sa church and uh, ako, nandito sila uh, the whole day preparing for the food. Okay? So, if you have seen them, you know, uh, thank them. Okay. May we ask those who had prepared yung food, yung mga may, 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 one? Nagluto? Sino? Oh, si Daniel. Sino pa? Teofilo? Oh, nasa taas. Yung iba nasa taas now. So, if you have seen those, uh, know who they are, let us go and thank them for uh, the food. You know, every every year, meron tayong mga masasarap na mga pagkain that we have, uh, that we have prepared because it is Christmas time. Okay. So as we come before the Lord, although yung Christmas, kailan yung Christmas? It is in December 25, isn't it? It is December 25, okay? But we are celebrating it one week before, okay? So, okay, you know, uh, even though if we are celebrating one week before, but in reality, I don't know if you know this, but Jesus had never, is not uh, born on December 25, okay? Hindi siya pinanganak sa December 25, but why is it that uh, December 25 is a day wherein we celebrate the birth of Jesus? Let me make an example. Just like, you know, this week, okay, my siblings uh, sa Pilipinas, they would be busy and they will be coming together next week sa 17, okay? So they would be, uh, 19, Tuesday. So they will gather on 19 to do one thing, to celebrate my dad's birthday, okay? Although, okay, my dad has already passed away, but then they came together, uh, dapat is uh, 17, okay, tonight. But some of them, uh, meron mga uh, occasion, mga schedule, and that is why they move it to 19, okay. So, 19 is, uh, they come together to celebrate, but December 19 is not the birthday of my, my dad, okay, iba yung kanya, hindi 19 siya. But they pick a day wherein they would be able to come together to celebrate and to remember my dad. The same way with Christmas. So, we don't know when Jesus was born, but they have a date that uh, set a date for us so that we would be able to take this day and to remember the birth of Jesus. Although, hindi natin alam kung kailan, okay, when Jesus was born. But one thing that we are sure, that in the Bible, it recorded the birth of Jesus. Okay, it recorded the birth of Jesus. So, if we... Okay. Okay. So, in Luke 2, 9 to 11, let's all read together itong passage na to. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone over them. They were terribly afraid, but the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I am here with good news for you, which will bring great joy to all the people. This very day in David's town, your Savior was born, Christ the Lord. Okay. So, the angel came, the first uh, uh, caroling, or when Jesus was born, you know, according to the Bible, the angel came and appeared to them. And here it says that the glory of the Lord shone over them, and those shepherds, they were afraid. So, an angel appeared to the shepherd, and then to give them this good news. Sabi niya, don't be afraid, I'm here with good news for you, which will bring ano, great joy to all the people. So, Jesus came to do one important thing. It is a news. The birth of Jesus is a good news that will bring ano, great joy to all the people. And that is why every December as we celebrate, you know, we said that it is uh, uh, December is celebrating Christmas. And we have this, uh, the spirit of Christmas, which is the spirit of joy among us. Okay. So tonight, today, as we gathered here, we are celebrating this joy 
the birth of Jesus that uh, the angel had proclaimed. And this good news brings a, good, uh, a great joy to us. Now, why is it? Okay, and why, uh, I'll be sharing with you. But right now, I just want you to stand up. Okay, let's all stand up. You know, it is Christmas, isn't it? I don't know if you have received your first gift. Sino na naka, naka kuha ng uh, gift, Christmas gift? Meron? Ah, yung iba. Wala pa. Okay, so tignan nyo na sa katabi nyo. Okay, sabihin nyo sa katabi nyo, hindi pa ako nakakuha ng gift. Like, para at least alam nila. Ah, wala pa akong Christmas gift. <laughs> okay. Ah, so, so, alam nyo na, no? So, Christmas okay, is a spirit of joy. So, why not? Let's take this time right now. I want you to go around, at least, go and uh, greet, uh, maybe, okay, I don't know. Uh, has anyone greet you a Merry Christmas? Meron ba? Nag-greet sa inyo. Wala pa, di ba? So, right now, let us make this opportunity. I want you to go around and find at least uh, 10 person. Ah, hindi, five na lang, five. Limang tao, ah, limang tao, na hindi mo kilala. Okay, na hindi yung nasa tabi mo. Okay? You go around and then you greet them, Merry Christmas. And then tell them, wala pa akong grief. Wala pa akong gift. Okay, lai. Go. At least lima, go around. Okay, Merry Christmas. Uh, yung gift, wala pa akong gift. Go around. At least five, ha? At least limang tao, ha? Five. Okay. Tandaan niyo yung mga pangalan, ha? At least meron na kayong limang gift pag naalala yung pangalan niyo. <laughs> okay, if you have greeted five person, you could take your seat. Okay, you could take your seat. Okay. Okay, yung mga, uh, I believe, yung mga katabi niyo ngayon, most of those, maybe it is your spouse or your friend or your family member, di ba? Normally, ganun eh. So, why not tell the person beside you, huwag mong kalimutan yung gift ko, ah. Ay, yun ang mas possible na ma... Oh, ayan, ayan. Okay. Okay. Okay, so, Christmas without Christmas gift is not Christmas, isn't it? Uh, last week, I have already received my first Christmas gift. Uh, may nagbigay na sa akin Christmas gift. Okay, so I was happy. So it's the first Christmas gift. And I was expecting more. Kasi nandun mga tao ngayon. <laughs> At least alam nyo na wala pa ako iba. Okay. So Christmas, you know, is a, is, is a, is a, uh, is a good news of great joy. It's a season of joy for us, even for us. Why? Because of what the angel had proclaimed. Sabi niya, I am here with good news for you which will bring great joy to all the people. Now, what is this great joy? Why is it that this news brings good news, uh, great joy? If you look at verse 11, sabi niya, This very day in David's town, your Savior was born, Christ the Lord. So, the angel came to proclaim the birth of Jesus and he said he is the Savior and at the same time, he is Christ. Okay? Alam natin, Savior, di ba? Who yung liligtas sa atin. But do you know the, the, the words Christ? What is the meaning of Christ? The word Christ, you know, katumbas niyan sa Old Testament, a word that sometimes uh, maybe we are more familiar, which is uh, the word Messiah. Okay? Messiah. And so in the Old Testament, you know, God has already prophesied about this Messiah that is coming, this Christ in the New Testament that is coming. And this has been uh, proclaimed, especially in a verse in the Bible, okay, in Isaiah 9, verse 16. And so when he said that there would be a, a, a virgin who would give birth, okay, and this is what he said. He said that for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, ano ba? Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. And so in the Old Testament, 
God has already through the prophet has prophesied the coming of the Messiah. Darating na yung Messiah. And what kind of Messiah is this? You know, the people expected another kind of Messiah. A Messiah that will come like a general that would help them you know, fight yung battle so that they would be able to get back yung, uh, yung uh, bansa nila. But, lo the, but, but the Lord, he prophet, uh, through the prophet, he prophesied another Messiah. He said that there would be a child that would be born. Okay? And his name what? His name will be called Wonderful Counselor. Ano ibig sabihin ng Wonderful Counselor? That he will take care of the decisions of life. He is coming to help us deal with some decisions sa buhay natin. I believe all of us had a lot of decisions to make, isn't it? And sometimes, nakakatakot. If we make one wrong decisions, what happened? You know, the outcome would be really very, very not good, di ba? Okay, affectado na yung lahat. And so, but God, Jesus came to help us to make decisions, help us make wonderful decisions. And when He came to help us make decisions, everything that we made according to His leading would be wonderful. Second, He would be called the Mighty God. Jesus came to become the Mighty God because He came to deal with a lot of mga issues, problems sa buhay natin. So, we know that we all experience a lot of difficulties, struggles sa buhay natin. Eh. And some of them are overwhelming. They are greater than we could be able to imagine or we could be able to deal with. But, the mighty God is uh, Jesus coming to help us. In Him, nothing is impossible. So that He came to deal with issues, difficulties, problems of life. So that we would be able to overcome them. And then the third name that He gave is Everlasting Father. And the fourth is Prince of Peace. You know, in the last two weeks, we've been speaking about the name of Jesus. We have uh, covered Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. But today, I want to share with you about Jesus who is called Everlasting Father. Now, when we hear about everlasting Father, you know, sometimes we wonder, di ba? Jesus is the Son, isn't it? Anak siya eh. How can the Son be the Father? Okay, we know that uh, we, believe, we believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The three in one, isn't it? So, how can Jesus, okay, uh, uh, the Son, become the Father? Okay, now what is it here that uh, God is saying to us? Okay. When God prophesied about this coming Messiah, He was prophesying about yung work niya when He comes here. And so, most of those we know, wonderful counselor, He is the mighty God who will help us deal with difficulties. And He is also the everlasting Father. Which means to say, He came to show us the love of the Father. And at the same time, He came to seek us and He used a fatherly heart and love and concern for each one of us. Like a father, He came to love us, to seek for us, to help us, and to be able to, to strengthen us. So that He came as a Father with fatherly love. Okay. That is why today, you know, we could be able to experience yung love of a Father. I don't know about each one of us. Maybe in the past, when we speak about Father, maybe some of us have uh, uh, magandang mga memories mga tatay natin mga magulang natin so we have a good father we have a mem very memorable father but I believe not all of us have some of us have a difficult time with our fathers some of us you know we are frustrated with our parents with our fathers because they are not always there for us and sometimes they hurt us in many many different ways and so we have this negative view of a father but no matter how we feel about a father but the Bible tells us one thing, that God is our eternal Father. Jesus came to show us the Father's love. And that we know that the Father's love is, uh, no, His love is unconditional. And His love is never-ending because it is eternal. And His love is always there for us, never leave us nor forsake us. Today, I want to share with you some aspect of the love of the Father. Alam natin, di ba, pagmamahal ng tatay, there are different times, uh, kinds of love and different aspects of His love. But today, I want to share with you from a passage in the Old Testament. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 23, 26 to 29. Okay? So we will be reading this passage. And we would be coming and uh, looking at uh, what kind of father. Okay? And uh, how does the fatherhood of God Okay, uh, manifest himself or we could experience the fatherhood of God. You know, in Isaiah 63, 16, in the Old Testament, okay, his people always considered that God is, his, is uh, their father. So, tignan mo, ha, 
gaya ng Isaiah 63 verse 11. Let's all read together. You are our father, our ancestors, Abraham and Jacob do not acknowledge us, but you, Lord, are our father, the one who has always rescued us. So the one who has always rescued us, and he is our father. Even in the New Testament, when Jesus is teaching his disciples to pray, sabi niya ano, the first uh, prayer that he teach them is, our father who are in heaven. Okay. So, in all of the, uh, the Bible, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, we know one thing, that, Jesus, that God is a father to those who believe in Him and those who followed Him. But how does God uh, manifest His uh, fatherhood? How does God okay, uh, help us understand or experience His father? What does it mean? Okay, today, we want to look at Deuteronomy 33, 26-29. Let's all read together itong passage na to. Okay. People of Israel, no God is like your God. Riding in splendor across the sky, riding through the clouds to come to your aid. God has always been your defense. His eternal arms are your support. He drove out your enemies as you advanced and told you to destroy them all. So Jacob's descendants live in peace, secure in a land full of grain and wine, where dew from the sky waters the ground. Israel, how happy you are. There is no one like you, a nation saved by the Lord. The Lord himself is your shield and your sword to defend you and give you victory. Your enemies will come begging for mercy and you will trample them down. Okay? So today I want to share with you okay, this, uh, from this passage, what does Jesus do as our eternal father? As he came to show us the father's love, as he came to uh, be concerned with a fatherly love, Okay, what does he do to us? Now, from the Old Testament, we could always experience how God deals with his people. Okay. Now, if we want to know about the background of Deuteronomy, itong book na to, it is a book, last book, wherein Moses, okay, he is going to mamamatay na siya because he's leading the Israelites out of the uh, e uh, yung, uh, Egypt and then the desert for 40 years, and they are now going into the promised land. And so as they are going there, God said, you cannot enter because of what you have done. He had sinned against God, kaya hindi siya makakapasok doon. And so before they entered into the promised land, so Moses used the whole of Deuteronomy to speak with his people and to bring back some of the things that they have experienced and to tell all those people about who this God is who had led them here to, in the desert and as well as he was going to lead them okay, to go across and then to possess the promised land. Okay. And so as he speak with them in verse uh, chapter 33, 34, last chapter na yan, 33, he speak about every tribe and he bless young every tribe. And after blessing every tribe, he started to mention about who God is to the whole Israelites. Okay. So today I want to share with you from this, really like to see, you know, as a father to his children, the Israelites, what, this, what is God doing in their lives and how did God reveal himself in a fatherly way? Okay, fatherly concern to his people. Okay. Now, the first thing we come uh, in this passage in verse 26, 27. Let's all read together. People of Israel, no God is like your God riding splendor across the sky, riding through the clouds to come to your aid. God has always been your defense. His eternal arms are your support. He drove out your enemies as you advanced and told you to destroy them. Okay. So, Moses said, people of Israel, so he was talking with his people, no God is like your God riding in splendor across the sky, riding through the clouds to come to your aid. Now, what is Moses saying in here? You know, he said that your God who leads you is, cannot be compared with other gods. Ay, itong, just na to, it is riding in splendor across the sky, riding through the clouds to come to your aid. Now, what is Moses saying is that, you know, he is uh, okay, recalling back what God has said. God has told his people that, he said that, I came, okay, and I carried you on eagle's wing, okay, and carried you out so that you would be able to be free from slavery. So, the Bible always, okay, use a bird, eagle, okay, to tell us about who God is. You know, eagles are powerful, isn't it? And so, eagles, sabi niya, those, he carried us on eagle's wing so that all the people would be what? They would be saved and they, they would be able to be free from slavery okay and in verse 27 god has always been your defense 
His eternal arms are your support. He drove out your enemies as you advanced and told you to destroy them all. So God has always been your defense. You know, even when they were in Egypt, if you know it, you know, from uh, Canaan, they went to Egypt for 400 years. From uh, someone that is very prominent sa, sa Egypt, nung da bagong pumunta sila, uh, when they went there, okay, with 70 members of all the members of Joseph, he was the second in command of Pharaoh. And so they were treated very well because uh, kamag anak sila na ni Joseph. But then after that, new king came out na hindi kilala. And that is why for 400 years, you know, they, uh, they become more and more. Dumami na sila, they populated Egypt. And so, you know, the Pharaoh was, uh, was afraid. And they started to, what, to take advantage and then make all those Israelites slaves. Okay, naging slaves sila. And in the midst of they being slaves, but God never leave them nor forsake them. Although they suffered, but when they cry out to God, the Bible said that God heard their cry and God came to them to help them. And that's why he sent Moses to help them to bring them out of Egypt. So God has always been their defense. God has never forsaken them, but God continued to support them, to, uh, to protect them. Okay? And in this protection, he mentioned one thing. He said, His eternal arms are your support. Ano itong arms na to? Whenever the Old Testament speak about the ar arms of God, it means God's power. Okay? God's power, God's care, and God's protection. So in other words, in spite of their difficulties sa buhay nila, that being a slave in Egypt, but God was there supporting them. God was there. His arms are, are providing and then protecting them. Okay? In spite of all this, the protection of God is with them. And eternal, ibig sabihin, God never leave them. And that's why God through uh, Moses, led them out of Israel. So, here we see about what God is doing to His children. Okay, even though in difficult times, God is always there, His eternal arms are always there, and helping them, and at the same time, uh, supporting them, and at the same time, protecting them. So, the first thing that we see about God doing in the lives of His people is that as a father, He protects he protects them even in the midst of those danger, difficulties, but He was there protecting them. Maybe they don't know, but God was always protecting them. Today, the same way with us. Jesus came to show us that the Father and even Jesus is always concerned about our safety. And He is always protecting us, supporting us, coming to our aid so that we would be able to experience Him. And in the midst of all those troubles, we know one thing that we are safe in the hands of God. Okay. In December 2, 22015, okay, I don't know kung ilang taon na kayo nun. Okay, I was uh, three years old. Okay. <laughs> December 2, 2015, okay. So, that was a Wednesday morning. Okay, morning. Okay. At around 10.55, umaga umaga, 10.55, okay. At 27 years old, Denise Paraza, Dennis Paraza. Okay. He was sitting uh, next to another guy by the name of Shannon Johnson. Hindi sila magkakilala. But they were in a place uh, at a table in a social service complex sa San, uh, San Bernardo, California. Okay. And so as they were sitting there, nagpakakilala, and so they were joking around because they saw sa itong, uh, uh, itong lugar na to, social service complex na to, meron isang clock. And Sabi nila, baka sira na yung clock back because you know that the time is very slow. Okay, so they were joking around that. Baka sira na to, matanda na tong clock na to. And as they were joking around, after five minutes, hindi na akalaim that there were gunmen in military gear, style gear, open fired kay at them yung namana na sa loob. Okay, and killing at least 14 and wounding 70 person. 17 more. Okay. Now, as the gunman start firing, you know, Shannon did one thing. Okay, he huddled. Okay, he iniyakap niya si uh, si si Dennis. Okay, okay, and then they move. Uh, in uh, they they use the table to 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 protect them. Okay, from the gunman. And so as they were there huddled together, okay, the gunman continued to fire. Sixty rounds of bullet were fired across the room. Okay. While Denise cannot recall any single second that played out that morning, hindi niya na ma ma maalala kung what happened next or everything else. Okay, because in all this confusion, he he's not clear about it. But one thing, he's clear about. 
It is one thing that uh, because you know he felt the arms of Shannon that is embracing her, and then he heard three words that uh, uh, that repeatedly okay, na narinig niya that he always remember, and that three word was spoken by Shannon. Shannon said, "I got you, I got you, I got you," and because Shannon embraced him and they they took uh, they used the table to 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 shield uh, from the gunman. So he was, she was able to survive. Okay, what we called the uh, 2015 San Bernardino shooting. Okay, that was happened on December, because of the arms of Shannon, and because he got him there, and he was saved from it. Today, no matter what we are going through right now, remember one thing: you know our eternal Father. He is always there for us, and He is always there protecting us. And that's why no matter what kind of difficulties that we find ourselves in, when there's nobody else, when we are in danger, and even we don't know what is going on, let us always remember these three words. God always said, I got you, I got you, I got you. God always got us. God always is in control of everything else because He is a father who always protects His children. I believe all of us who are fathers, we protect our children. And our Heavenly Father is one who would always protect us forever. So, this is the first thing that we learn. Jesus came to show us about the Father's love. That this fatherly love, He is always there to protect no matter what it is. And that's why as we celebrate Christmas, you know, we are going through many difficulties or challenges of why not. We don't know what will happen. But no matter what happened, no matter what kind of accident we, have, we, we, we encountered, but we know one thing, God is always in control. And God has always His arms around us. Yung everlasting arms niya is always around us so that we would always be safe in His presence. May God help us find comfort and help in being in God being our Father. Now the second thing we see, what God is doing in the lives of His, uh, of his children, the Israelites, not only, you know, He come to His aid and His arms are there to protect them and to support them so that they will be able to be safe. The second thing that the father did as they are journeying from uh, yung, uh, the umpisa, okay, from uh, Abraham until they came out of Egypt and when they are going into the promised land. In verse 28, let's all read together. So Jacob's descendants live in peace, secured in a land full of grain and wine, where dew from the sky waters the ground. Okay. Here we see something about the father. He said, Jacob's descendants live in peace. Okay. Today, you see something, di ba? We know about the news in Israel. Ano nangyari ngayon sa Israel? They are war with the Hamas. And then this war has been going on. The first day that they have uh, go back again and then established the nation of Israel until today. There are a lot of wars. Maraming mga malalaki, maraming din mga maliliit. And yung mga kalaban nila, not only the neighboring uh, mga country, but most of those small fight is with yung Hamas or PLO. Okay. And so, you know, they are living in that place na walang peace. Okay. But then here said, so Jacob's descendants live in peace, secured in a land full of grain and wine, where dew from the sky waters the ground. You know, God promised one thing to His people, that God is going to become, to give them peace in whatever circumstances. So, when God called Abraham, sabi niya, you come out and you go to the promised land that I'm going to give to you. And so, God said that the land that I'm going to do, give to you is what? It's a land flowing with milk and honey. Anong ibig sabihin? Pagpunta mo doon, pwede kang pumunta sa, uh, in, in the river which is full of milk and then mag uh, na doon? No. The milk and honey, what does it uh, represent? It is an idiom expression. It represents that the land is abundant. That the land, the water is there is plenty. And that there, you know, the trees would blossom and that the fruit would bear good fruit. And so what God has promised to the Israelites is not only they would be secured in the land because God is going to, uh, to provide them okay, full grain and wine, dew from the sky, waters and ground, so that they would be able to live in peace and they would be able to experience God's provision for them. Okay. And it happens. You know, when God brings them in, after a while, when they continue to, to, to worship God, 
and to follow after God. You know, they experienced many, many years of great uh, yung life nila. In the reign of uh, Solomon, in the reign of uh, King David, and some of those kings that really follow after God. You know, they experience peace. Even though may mga kalaban nila, but God is always there protecting them. And so they could be able to live in peace. Today, the same thing with us. You know, God has one heart, okay, desire, that we could be able to live in peace. Not only in peace, but we would be secured and that we would be able to experience life at its best. Remember all the promise of God's Bible. If you look at the, the Old Testament, God said that I have a plan for you, isn't it? Plan to what? Plan to prosper you and give you a future. And when you come to the New Testament, God said that, you know, Jesus came to give life and to give us more, ano, abundant life. Hindi lang buhay, but abundant life. It means to say, you know, what God wants as a father is for us to experience life. All the support, all the provision that we needed, God is going to give to us. You know, for me as a pastor, I always experience God's provisions and His blessings sa buhay ko. Because God as a father, second, not only he protects, but he would always provide for our needs. You know, for me, you know, I've always experienced God's provision. And even right now, okay, there would always be a lot of surprises that God has given to me. You know, last uh, month, uh, November, I went, uh, to, uh, went back to the Philippines. Okay, boom, now. And then so uh, together with my siblings and mom, okay, we went for a trip. Okay, we go to Baguio. And after that, we went to Vigan to attend yung uh, anniversary dun, yung church dun. Okay, so back to our own hometown. Okay. And so when we go back to uh, Vigan, okay, we, we, we stayed on a hotel. Okay, apat na room. Okay, because we are uh, eight of us. Okay, so apat na room. So we stayed there for around three days. Okay. And then three days, that, uh, three days in that place, we went around. And then we see mga, mga yung old friends. Okay. And on Sunday, okay, we attended yung anniversary nila. And Sunday night, we are going back to Manila na. Okay? Uwi na kami. And so when we are still in the uh, yung, uh, sa, uh, sa hotel, so I, uh, someone called me, uh, one of the yung, uh, leaders of the church. And he called me and he said, Eh, Pastor, if you're, uh, pag, uh, if you're going back to Manila, please yung resibo, paki-iwan uh, na lang sa counter. Uh, paki-iwan na sa counter. And he said, because the church wants to pay for yung, uh, yung, ano tag doon? Yung, uh, yung, uh, accommodation. So, the church wants to pay for your accommodation. Sabi namin, huh? Four rooms, three days, the church would do. Of course, my brother, uh, my second brother, uh, he is the, yung, siya yung speaker nung, uh, anniversary. But, some of, uh, all of us hindi na. And uh, I've also been there. I've also speak to them. So they said that, you want muna lang resibo para ano, and we're going to pay for it. You know, for me, it is a big thing. Why? You know, every time na uwi ako, for all of us, alam natin, di ba? Okay, if we are going home for vacation, anong magastos natin? Airplane, plane ticket, di ba? And after yung plane ticket natin, ano pa? Mga pasalubong, isn't it? You know, if you have only one brothers at home, okay lang. I have six so I have five brothers, and then my mom six. So I have to buy a lot of mga pasalubong sa kanila. Okay, every time magwui ko meron. And so gagastos na naman ako don. And then when we go out, it's the same way. Lat ng gastos ano? Hati hati yan. Okay. And even my mom, yung gastos nila hati din kami. Lahat magkakapatid. And so for me, you know, there would be a lot of uh, expenses that is going on. And so, but you know, God has always been good to me. And that is why he said, okay, so yung accommodation, okay, so kami nagbabayad. Okay, so I don't need to pay for that. But, you know, I decided, no. I said, you know, we are on vacation. Kami yun eh. Okay, so the church should not be shouldering yung expenses namin. So we did not let them pay. Okay, but these things, okay, give me something. Okay, that I experienced something from God. God knows my need. God knows where I am. God knows what, what, uh, kung ano yung mga pangailangan sa buhay ko. And God will always bring something good in my life. So, as a father, He will always provide. You know, just like we who are fathers, you know, we always provide for our children. And you know, there are a lot of times na uh, when I was at home, I would always be looking around. Ano tinitigdan ko? Yung mga gamit ng bata. I would be looking about yung cell phone nila, ay yung mga saksakan nila, and then yung mga ginagamit nila. 
And sometimes I would see, bakit sira na yung screen, yung uh, cellphone, di ba? Yung ano tag doon? Yung uh, uh, protector. Eh, okay. So, sira na, medyo basag na. And ginagamit pa. Sabi ko, bakit ayaw? Why, why, why don't they uh, told me or whatever? And so what I would do is, alam ko yung mga, mga cellphone nila, kung ano yung mga model. So I would go to Shopee and I would go buy, buy something. And after nandun na, I would say, eh, yung cellphone mo, akin na. I said, bakit? Sira na yung screen, cyber, ay, yung screen mo. And then so I would get it and then I would, I would change it bago naman sa kanila. So a lot of times they would get a lot of new things. Okay? Not because they came to me, but because as a father, I would always look at yung mga pangangailangan nila. Before they speak, alam ko na. And before they, 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 they ask for me, you know, nandun na, nakaready na. So this is the heart of a father. A father always protect and a father always provide. And the same way with our God, He is a Father to us who protects us and who provides for us. The third thing that our Father, that Jesus came to show us about the Father's love, it is found in verse 29. Let's all read together ito. Israel, how happy you are. There is no one like you, a nation saved by the Lord. The Lord Himself is your shield and your sword to defend you and give you victory. Your enemies will come begging for mercy and you will trample them down. Okay. So, Israel, how happy you are. Okay, what uh, Moses said is that, you know, as the people of God, you are really blessed. Because there is no one like you, a nation saved by the Lord Himself, who came to save, who came to give you, to provide for you. Okay, so there is no God that has saved a nation, but the Lord did this. The Lord Himself is your shield and your sword to defend you and give you victory. In spite of all the enemies that they have, you know, during the time after that, they are going to enter into Canaan. And they will face a lot of mga challenges. They, were, they have to fight their way into the promised land. They have to wage war with a lot of nations uh, greater and bigger than them and uh, stronger than them. But God said what? God said, the Lord will be your shield and your soul to defend you and He will give you victory. In other words, do not be afraid. No matter what is challenges before you, you would be able to overcome. My brothers, sisters, a lot of times we face a lot of mga difficulties, especially this time. You know, there are a lot of things that is happening, okay? Uh, yung mga economy natin dito is not going good. You know, some of us are working three days. I, I, I heard tatlong araw na or apat na araw. And so, wala na. And so, sometimes we are uh, going through difficult times that you know, we don't know what to do and we don't know how to deal with all of this. No matter what it is, maybe some of us struggle with a lot of different things. For example, as we watch yung skit natin, di ba? I don't know uh, uh, how you see it. You know, a man who has struggled in life, he tried to find God. He tried to do everything to find God. Okay? To go back to God, but wala siyang magawa. And a lot of those fear, a lot of those sin, a lot of those struggle that is surround him. And he cannot overcome them. But then in this case, Jesus came. And when he came, everything became quiet. And when he came, he was able to overcome everything else. The same thing with us as Christians. You know, for us, we struggle with life. But with God, we could always overcome because our God, he is a God of the impossible. And every time that we experience something that is difficult, God would always be there. He would protect us. He would provide for us. And He will always give us victory. There was a Jewish believer now, by the name of uh, Dr. Max. Okay. He said this, that when he uh, got married first, okay, and they were uh, with his young wife, niya, they were called to full-time Christian service. And so God blessed the ministry. Nila, and a lot of people accepted the Lord. Although yung income nila, very small. Okay. But they don't have a lot of mga possession. So they were able to go through life pa rin, okay pa rin. Okay. But one day, however, one day, his, uh, his wife came to him and said one thing. He said, Max, there's nothing to eat for dinner. Wala na tayong pagkain pang dinner. And Max, no one thing. Wala nang pera din eh. Wala na ring pera. So wala nang pagkain, wala nang pera. How could they buy mga grocery? Wala na. But Max did not say anything. He did not reply. He said, stood there. And he was listening to the birds singing. 
Okay, because there was trees around them. And so those birds were singing in the street and in, in the tree. And suddenly a word came to him in a song that flashed through his mind. And the song said, His eyes on the sparrow. May some song that said, His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. And immediately something came to him. And he said to his wife, He said, If God could uh, take care of your my birds, diba? If God could take care of the birds, they don't need to, to, to work. And then God feed them so that they could be, be able to, be, to live. Okay. How much more we who belongs to God. And he said, I believe that God will provide for us. Ganun na lang. And he said to his wife, don't worry, God will provide. And that's all. Tapos na. Okay. And suddenly, as they were talking, there was a knock on the door. And so as they opened, there was a, a, a lady that, uh, in front, na may dala. And the lady introduced him, herself. His, she said, you know, you don't know me, but I know you, okay? So I am, uh, and he, he, he told Max yung name niya. And he said, you know, uh, there's one thing why I'm here, because uh, in the past, my husband, okay, whenever na uh, sweldohan na, whenever he'd get the, the, the salary, he would always go out and drink. And he would spend all the money so that me and my kids will have nothing to eat. And then we suffered a lot from it. But then he had this opportunity one day of hearing you preach. Okay, nag preach ka. He heard it and he accepted you and his life was changed. And uh, today he came back with the full yung sweldo. Nandiyan na, full sweldo, uh, dinala sa bahay. And I was very happy. And so I went there, went out and I uh, brought a lot of my groceries. And I started to cook a lot of my food for my family. But as I was cooking, you know, something inside me told me that half of those food dapat ano it belongs to Max hindi akin yan because of what Max has, has done he had preached the gospel and that's why it changes yung life yung uh, asawa niya and so he thought that well if it is half of them belongs to Max then I need to give itong half of what I'm cooking to Max and he was thinking na pagkatapos na gluto pagkatapos na kumain sa kanala dadalhin but then there was that uh, prompting inside him and said, no, you need to go right now. You need to bring your food right now. And so I'm here right now with this food and he gave them the food. Here is half of the chicken and some biscuit that has been uh, cooked in the oven. And so this is for you because you deserve all of this. And then he, she, she, she left. And so when Max received this, he started to praise God. And he sung this song. He said, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Thank God from whom all blessings flow. It is because God's provided and it is because God gave them the strength to be able to overcome whatever they are. So as a father to us, you know, not only he protects, not only that he provides, but as a father, he gives victory. He helps us overcome whatever that we are going through in life. Maybe we have a lot of different uh, mga, uh, struggle in life. But God is always there to give us help so that we would be able to, uh, uh, able to overcome. Right now, I just want uh, a privilege to ask a brother to come and share with us. May we ask si Joey to come, uh, si, si Norman, <laughs> si Norman to come and share with us yung uh, story niya and how God has become yung help niya. Okay, like. Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I am Norman Sinin, and I want to share with you how Jesus changed my life. Way back 2017, I decided not to be rehired here in Taiwan. In order to settle our wedding with my fiance, Diana, in Thailand, where she worked and stayed with her missionary sister. Before the wedding, I was baptized as born again Christian. Our family from Philippines joined us, and it was a su successful event. After the wedding, we joined in missionary service. But I need to find a job to secure a working visa. But because I'm shy and lack of confidence to myself, even though I'm a college graduate and a degree holder, I cannot find a teaching job. For almost seven months without income, I lost every resources that I have. I also lost hope in finding job. 
So, so me and my wife decided to go back in Philippines to work or if given the chance to work both here in Taiwan. I am thankful because my brother-in-law referred me to their boss here in Taiwan. And after a couple of weeks processing the papers, I was able to come back here. After a while, February 2018, I experienced depression. I became irritated, uncomfortable with my surroundings. Even our dor dorm made me irritated. It's very untidy. Different races leave their lots of vices. Smoking, mobile gamers, addiction, drinking alcohol, lots of fights and quarrels, and even womanizing. Soon, I become addicted to mobile games as my, as my pastime. Only three to four hours sleep every night. I ate at convenient store and always want to be alone. I was bullied, experienced criticism, and, and appreciated even my work, suffered. I try hard to learn my job, but I'm slow to learn. But my supervisor did not give up on me. Two years after my wife got an opportunity to work here and took, her, took care of me. But one day, she found out my medicine that I was hiding in the ceiling. She got angry and we seldom talk. No matter how I explained my side, she never understand. As time goes by, my wife is losing hope with me. One day, I heard that, that my in-laws is deciding about my wife's future, that there is no chance for me to change because they cannot even invite me in going to church. To the point that my wife confronted me to process a legal separation. Hearing that, I cannot control my temper. We argued and I said, go home and come back with the papers and I'm going to sign it. My family knows all, all these things. My mom got sad hearing it and my sister said that Wake up, my brother. We know you can overcome it. After what happened, I don't know where to go seek for help and advice. I become silent and I ask God why he put me in this kind of hardships and trials that I've never been before. But he never answer. I also hearing scary voice in my mind that I'm not worthy to live. No one loves me and cares for me. Then heard laughing at me. Then I remember my high school Christian teacher once said that people that suicide always go to hell. This time I cried to our, and called to our Lord Jesus again and saying, forgive me my Lord for what I have done and what I'm thinking command me and I will follow you. Even if my heart becomes stone, all this is possible with you. I want my family, I don't want them to suffer, worry or get angry, especially my dad. Since he is a public servant and a reserve army, I don't want to be disgraced. I want to be sensitive and considerate to my family and surroundings. After that, I decided to go to church. God contacted me with the message, but I'm hurt deeply and never go to church again. Couple of months after Ati Gina and Ati Jael cell group visited our dorm, they said that Jesus loves me and convinced me to go to church quickly. I just said, okay for them not to come back. <laughs> I started attending church and I was touched with our church vision and mission. Worship songs made me cry deeply and ending tears keep flowing from my eyes every Sunday worship. The Holy Spirit touches my heart through sermons. Soon I joined the cell group together with my wife. 
I learned to repent and forgive myself, my wife and those who hurt me. Christ is my victory. I surrender my everything to Him, my worries, my problems, and sickness. Jesus is all that I needed. Once I was a loser, weak, and lost, but now I am found. He always reminds me of His two greatest commandments, to love God and to love others. I will, I will always be grateful and thankful ser serving Him. My peace, joy, hope, and true friend. He is my almighty God, my everything. All glory belongs to Him. Indeed, in life, we experience a lot of difficult, different situations. Some of those are beyond what we could do. But no matter in times of difficulties and even when we are frustrated in life, may we always remember that our God, He is our Father. He is a Father, everlasting Father to us, and that He never leave us nor forsake us. No matter what happened, He would always protect, He would always provide, and He will always give us the strength to overcome. And as we come uh, this morning, it is not only about celebrating Christmas, but it is celebrating the presence of God in our lives. Not in the lives of other people or in the church, but to celebrate the Father of God in my life. So why not let us close our eyes right now? I don't know what you're going through right now. Maybe you're struggling. Maybe you are Christians and you have already backslidden. Maybe there are things that hinders you from coming to Him. And even some of us, maybe you have not received Him or become a Christian. But no matter who we are, the fact that our Father, He is the everlasting Father. And He is always a Father to each one of us. He loves us. He cares for us with a fatherly love. So that wherever we are, whatever we are going through, He never leaves us nor forsakes us. Indeed, whenever we are in troubles, let us learn one thing. To trust in Him. When troubles comes, I trust in You. For I know You will lead me through, and I know. When the storms are drawing near And when the storms are drawing near When I'm with you I don't have to fear You're my shepherd on whom I can depend Lord, you are always here with me. There is no change in God with You are the same yesterday and today and forevermore.
my solid rock, Almighty God, I worship you. Indeed, troubles come our way. When troubles come, I trust in you. For I know you will lead me through. He is faithful, and I know you are faithful to the end. Indeed, even when the storms are drawing near, and when the storms are drawing, God is always with us. When I'm with you, I don't have to fear. You're my shepherd on whom I can depend. Through the day or throughout the night, through the day and through the night, I know you're always by my. Side. Lord, you are always here with me. There is no changing God in thee. You are the same yesterday and today and forever. Here are the promises You hold my future in your hand My solid rock, almighty God, I worship Let's proclaim, Lord, you are always here with me Lord, you are always here with me. There is no changing God in me. You are the same yesterday and today and forevermore. Hear your prayer. Solid rock, Almighty God, I worship you. Why not let us close our eyes right now? I don't know what is happening in your life right now, but God knows every details of what you are going through. He not only knows about it, but He cares and He's in concern. And He wants to come and let you experience the love of the Father. Indeed, Jesus came for this very purpose that we would be able to experience the everlasting Father. The Father who loves us unconditionally, who always accepts us, who is always there for us no matter what. Even when we are doing something that is against Him, He loves us and He will never never leave us he will always be there waiting for us and even he comes to us today he wants you to know that he is here beside you my son my daughter even when you left me I never left you I'm always beside you and I'm always there for you why not let us come to the Father right now? Let us pray for ourselves. Let us bring whatever that we are going through and say, Father, I need you. Help me, Lord. I know that you are always there to protect, to provide, and as well as to give me strength. And I need you right now. Let us come before him right now. Let us pray for ourselves. Let us bring ourselves before the Father who loves us. Let us all pray together. Hallelujah.
Solid one, Almighty God, I will. Once again, let's proclaim. Lord, you are always here with me. Lord, you are always here with me. There is no change in God in me. You are the Yesterday and today and forevermore. Here on the promises I stand. You hold my future in your hand, my solid rock. Why not let us all stand up right now as we once again proclaim, You are always here with me, O oh Lord. Let's welcome His presence right now. Always here with me. He is beside you. There is no changing God. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yesterday and today. And forevermore, we have promises of God as our Father. We want our promises. I stand. You hold the future in your hand, my solid rock, Almighty God. I worship. Solid rock, Almighty God, I worship you. Let's pray. Father, we come to you, Lord. We thank you and we praise you, Lord. For we know one thing, Lord, that you are my solid rock. You are my Almighty God. And in you, Lord, nothing is impossible. Father, as we come, Lord, this morning, we know that you are a father to us. And as a father, you always protect, you always provide, Lord, and you always give strength for victory. And you know, Lord, our struggle. You know where we are right now, Lord. And we know one thing, that our futures is in your hands. My brothers, sisters, our future is in the hands of God. God has a future for us. To prosper us and to give us a future. Yes, maybe you are going through difficult times, and maybe you have missed out the love of a father. It has been a while that you have never experienced God coming to you and said, "My child, I've always loved you with an everlasting life." Today, God is in our midst, and we just want to take this opportunity right now. To allow Him to touch us, to allow Him to speak to us, and to allow Him once again to bring upon us His fatherly love. Right now, we want to ask among us if you need to experience again the fatherly love in your life as you go through difficulties. He said, "Lord, I want you to touch me today. I want you to help me experience your love right now." We just want to pray for some of us who struggle in many, many ways. Not all of us struggle, but some of us, most of us, we struggle in life, and we need to experience again the Father's love for us to know that He will be there to provide, to protect. And will give us strength. And so I just want to ask 
those who have needs would you remain standing so that we would be going around and just praying for you we don't have much time but we just want to pray for you for some of your needs so if you don't have anything that is going on in your life you could sit down so that we would know whom we could be praying you don't need to open your eyes and see sino yung umupo but if you have need you remain standing if you are not going through any things and you thank God for it you could sit down and then we could just as you sit down you just continue to pray for the person that is standing beside you they need the fatherly love they need to be touched by the presence of God you remain standing and we would like come to pray for you may we ask our leaders to go you know you just go and pronounce the love of God to them you just go and help them experience and bestowed upon them the love of the Father. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Oh, Shabbat Lord, we thank you. We praise you, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, right now. Father, we come to you right now. Oh, Shabbat Here in your promise, Lord. Here in your promise, Lord. We thank you. We praise you. Oh, Shabbat Shalom. We come to you right now, Lord, as we pray. Last week, pray for you. If you have been prayed, you could uh, sit down. If someone had prayed for you, you could take your seat so that we could be able to move around and pray for other people. speaking to us through the prayers of other people no matter who they are that have prayed for you we believe one thing that God is working through their prayers and he's bringing something in your life right now
Lord, you are always here with me. Lord, you are always here with me. There is no changing God in thee. You are the same yesterday and today and forevermore. Here on your promises I stand. You hold my future in your hands. My solid rock, Almighty God, I worship you. Indeed, Lord, as we come to you, we worship you, Lord. For we know, Lord, that you have worked in us. You have given us your word, Lord. And you came for us as a father. My brothers and sisters, Jesus came to be the everlasting father to us. And we could be able to experience the love of the Father. But how can we experience every day, not only for today? If we have Jesus in our hearts, then we will be able to experience Him every day of our lives. And so as we close our eyes, maybe some of us who had come here, you're here for the first time, or you have not yet in all your life have made a decision to receive Jesus, to tell Jesus, now, Lord, I need you. Come into my life and become my Savior and my Lord. This is what we call by to receive or to believe. Maybe you have not yet made this decision or you have not made any of those prayers in the past. And today you want to make sure that you have Jesus in your heart so that whenever you go, you would be able to experience the Father's love. And so as we close our eyes, I just want to ask and then to pray for some of us. If you want to receive Jesus, have not yet asked Jesus to, become, to come into your life, and you want to do it this morning, would you please raise up your hands? Raise up your hands and say, Lord, I need you and I want you, Lord, to come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. Anyone, you have to raise up your hands. Yes, I've seen your hands. You could put them down. Yes, I've seen your hands. Anyone else? You said, Lord, I want to receive you. I invite you into my life to become my Savior and Lord. Yes, I've seen your hands. You could put them down. Okay. You know, whenever you raise up your hands for God to see, not for me, and God acknowledge your decision. If you receive Him, then He is with you right now, and He will always be with you wherever you are, and you will experience the Father's love. So why not let us all stand up right now? Let us pray. And as I pray, you follow after me. Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for coming and revealing the Father's love to me. Lord, I need you. And this morning, I want to invite you into my life and be my Savior and be my Lord. I know you heard my prayer and you have acknowledged my decision. May you come right now and fill me so that I would experience you every day of my life. I thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's continue to pray. Father, we come to you, Lord. Especially, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for coming, Lord, and for leading us and then helping us, Lord, experience lord the love of the father father we thank you because we know one thing you're here especially lord we pray for a lot of people lord who raise up their hands who make a decisions lord to allow you to be their lord and savior and we rejoice lord in it for we know one thing that one that every day they will be able to experience lord your presence and your love and this morning we want to thank you lord for all that you have done and all that you have given to us lord and that this Christmas, help us, Lord, to experience you as our everly Father, everlasting Father. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's remain standing as we declare Christmas is about His glory.
and Christmas is about His grace. Christmas is about His glory. Christmas is about His grace. Christmas is a gift of love our Father gave us. More than just another story about a special time and place. Christmas is a time to live a song of praise. For God is with us. For God is with us. And we celebrate the glory of His presence. Christ has come to fill our hearts with love. He came to save us. King of kings and Lord of lords, His name is Jesus. God with us, Emmanuel has come. Angels fill the night with singing. Angels fill the night with singing. God is reaching out to men, bringing us a gift of hope in Christ our Savior. More than just a time of giving. This is God's eternal plan. And Christmas is the reason we can sing again. For God is with us. For God is with us. And we celebrate the glory of His presence. Christ has come to fill our hearts with To save us, King of kings and Lord of lords, His name is Jesus. God with us, Amen. For the last time, let's proclaim: For God is with us. For God is with us, and we celebrate the glory of His presence. Christ has come to fill our hearts with love. He came to save us. King of kings and Lord of lords, His name is Jesus. God with us. Emmanuel has come, God with us, God with us, Emmanuel, for the last time, God with us, Emmanuel has come, God with us, Emmanuel has come, let's pray, indeed Lord we come to you because we know that you are with us Lord today, not only for today, but for eternity because you are our eternal father we thank you lord and we praise you and as we stand before you lord may you bless each one of us may the grace of our lord jesus and the love of the father and the fellowship of the holy spirit be upon each one of us until the day that christ will come back and bring us into his glory in jesus name we pray amen why not let us all together merry Christmas! Okay, why not turn to the person on your right and your left and tell them Merry Christmas! Okay, before we Okay, before we leave this place. Okay, we are all invited to stay for lunch. Okay, after lunch meron pa tayong ano. 
Uh, konting laro. Patintero. Hindi, hindi, patintero. Okay, so we have some games in the afternoon. You're welcome to stay. Uh, hindi pa, may announcement pa. Okay, so we invite you to join if you have not, you are not joining us uh, every Sunday. We have our service here, pero sa 9. Okay, alas 9 in the morning. Uh, hindi alas 10. Okay, so be here every night in the Sunday. And also, we have cell groups, okay? Kung, kung you have questions or you want to share something that God has done in your life, you're welcome to join our cell groups, okay? There are two cell groups during Fridays at 8.30 p.m. Isa dito sa church, isa sa bahay ni Diana. And we have also one cell group here after the service, mga 11 during Sundays uh, with G-Con, Deacon Jael. Okay, you're welcome to join and stay. Okay, and also we have a kids Christmas party. Okay, for next Sunday. 2 p.m. A Saturday pala. Sorry. Next Saturday, 12, December 23. Okay, this will be a uh, home of Christ. Ibig sabihin na to, uh, Mandarin speaking group. Okay, so if your kids, kung dito na na, ano, pinanganak, I'm sure na mas ano na sila. English Mandarin, okay. Bilingual. So you're welcome to bring your kids here if you find your kids do not know what Christmas means anymore. Okay, you can come and join the Christmas party. Huh? 5 to 12? Paano mga nanay? Sa labas lang. Okay, if your kids from 5 to 12? 3 to 12. Okay. Okay, 3 to 12. Okay, if you have kids, uh, welcome to come and join the party during that time. Meron ba? Wala na. Okay, so uh, before we exit this place and eat, gusto daw nila maging ano tayo, may group picture. But how are we going to do this? Sinong coordinator? Girls, boys. Sino una? Bakit? Nandito na ako eh. Okay. So, sinong coordinator? Si Aileen daw. 